So the awareness starting to climb, I see better and better, but I'm still surprised how many women are not aware of their birth density being a problem. Um, we ran a survey recently, and um, about uh, 50% of the patients do not know what is dense breast and what does it mean in terms of screening mammography. Were you aware that according to the Mayo Clinic, around 50% of women getting mammograms have what's called dense breasts? And if you're one of those women that does have dense breast tissue, you won't actually know about it until you go for the mammogram. Now this is really important because dense breast tissue not only makes breast screenings harder, but it also increases the risk of breast cancer. Now there is a capability being filled in that not only helps with the diagnosis, but can now also be used in the biopsy. Barbara Moscovich, who I'm about to talk to, has benefited from this evolving capability called CESM, or Contrast Enhanced Spectral Mammography. Barbara, thanks for sharing your story. I'm going to jump right in. What was the process of identifying and diagnosing your lesion? Because your routine mammogram didn't pick it up. So what did? Well, um, because I had desk breasts, this cancer was more likely to be missed. Um, And in fact, that's what happened. Um, I only discovered that I had cancer because I, in between one of these yearly um, breast uh, mammograms, I had a physical with my doctor and she did a physical examination and discovered I had quite a large lump in my last breast. Um, And that's when I first met Dr. Kornicke um, because uh, they were looking at the mammogram, which was difficult to see. So then they looked at the ultrasound and then she came in to see me at that point um, and said, they definitely knew that there was this two centimeter lump on my left breast but she said they, she wanted to try this new technology on the right breast as well, because she probably knew that if you have a lesion on your left breast, um, there's a likelihood that there might be something on the right. She wanted to see the right breast. I think she had a suspicion there might have been something there, but this she couldn't tell because my breasts were so dense that it was either density or maybe something to be concerned about. So she explained that this new technology inserted a dye and that it made anything that was suspicious clear. After we did the procedure, she brought me back in and showed me the ultrasound picture uh, and also the contrast mammography picture. And it was it was amazing because the you had to, with the ultrasound or the regular mammography, it's just kind of little waves and shades and, and lumps and things. It's very difficult for somebody like me to see. And I, I would imagine even a specialist has to look really carefully to determine what exactly is going on there. But with the contrast mammography, it was amazing because the, the larger lump, of course, was very visible but they found this tiny, tiny black speck in between, in behind my nipple, which is not an easy place to find things. And I could see clearly that that's what was there. And uh, not that I wanted to see this, but it certainly um, made me realize that this had found something that no other technology they were using had found. So what is contrast-enhanced spectral mammography, Dr. Annette, and what does it do? If we leave the spectral component aside, it's basically using contrast iodine, similar to what is used with uh, CT exam, CAT scan, in order to um, uh, show uh, lesions in the breast in addition to the routine mammogram that we're familiar with. So it is based on the mammogram exam with added contrast component to that. Where you know that a modality is very good, if it makes you rethink the wheel and change your practice. And this is what happened to us with CSM. What's the difference between diagnostic and screening? Diagnostic is for patients with uh, either abnormal screening mammogram or with symptoms. Whereas a screening mammogram is for patients not symptoms um, and coming to have an annual or biannual, depends on the country, um, study 
which is mammogram in this case, in order to diagnose uh, breast cancer as incidental finding. And the tools in your box when it comes to that diagnostic process are MRI ultrasound and now CESM. But what determines which one of those diagnostic tools you use? If I'm seeing that the breast is completely fat, no way that I'm missing anything on this breast and except for this cancer that is so clear, I will go directly to an ultrasound and ultrasound guided biopsy. That's it. But if I'm seeing that the breast density is anything more than fatty, now I'm saying, okay, I will not do all of this old practice. I will go directly to CSM. We'll make the CSM. If this is the only lesion, I will do the ultrasound and do the ultrasound guided biopsy. If there will be more than one lesion, which I know that I'm more capable of finding with this tool, then I will do the ultrasound for both lesions, could be both breasts, do the biopsy, and then um, and, and find out everything in the same day. I know the biopsy bit isn't part of Barbara's story, but how does CESM become involved with the biopsy and why is it different and what are the benefits to using it? So after abnormal CS, CESM, if we see a lesion, we take the patient for the ultrasound, try to see this lesion and biopsy on the ultrasound. Ultrasound is the best modality for biopsy because it's a real-time imaging. So we know exactly that we are in the right spot. We don't need to, we see where we are. So, and it's very comfortable for the patient. So the problem is that only 70% when we audited our cases can be seen. Of the lesions that's seen on CESM can be seen on ultrasound. Then we struggle how to do that. So if we see something on mammogram, we can use routine mammography, what we call stereotactic guided biopsy in order to do the biopsy. If we don't, then until the CESM guided biopsy was developed, we were supposed to go and do an MRI guided biopsy. The entire experience is way more pleasant with CESM in comparison to MRI guided biopsy. We can talk to the patient, listen to their stories while we're doing the biopsy, and we do. We hear about their families, their kids, where school they're going, what job they started, all of these stories happening while we do the biopsy. Uh, but of course, it's not the only thing that we take into consideration. It's also the uh, ability to see a lesion. If we see a lesion on MRI, and we'll see that better on MRI, I want to biopsy that on MRI. If I see a lesion on CSM, and I, I want I don't see that anywhere. I want to buy it under CSM. My life-saving feature, I think, was that I became involved in Dense Breast Canada. So I had a, a purpose from this particular diagnosis to help other women understand the actually the dangers of having dense breasts and the need to take care of these things immediately and to get screened as often as you possibly can.